The kid retreated back to his corner, and the admiral set down his glass. Jonathan Grisby, he said again. The whole room seemed to wait. Yes, Jonathan replied. Then, sir. The admiral smiled with half his mouth. He tapped the papers with his finger. This is a terrible crime you've committed, Jonathan Grisby. Jonathan didn't answer. I suppose you, like most criminals, insist you are innocent? No, Jonathan replied quietly, his eyes downcast. I did it, sir. Hmm. I see. Unapologetic. Unashamed. No lesson learned yet, then? The Admiral's face twisted into another half-smile. It will be learned, though. It will. We have wonderful ways of teaching you lessons. He took another wet sip of his brandy and swished the alcohol around in his mouth. Jonathan swallowed a dry breath. He felt a warm bead of sweat start down his forehead. With a grunting sigh, the admiral rose to his feet and slumped around the desk to where Jonathan knelt in misery. Take, for example, the ingenious piece of furniture you are currently enjoying. Are you comfortable? No, sir. Of course you're not, the admiral spat. And nor do you deserve to be. He caressed the age-polished wood with chocolate-stained fingers. This device is known as the Sinner's Sorrow. She was here even before myself, a lovely leftover from one of Slabhenge's former lives. The sinner's sorrow was made all of wood and rose as high as the admiral's bulging belly. At its base was a rail where Jonathan's knees rested, a long piece of stained wood that was sharpened to a vicious edge that was biting at his flesh like a dull saw blade. At its top was a slanted flat desktop and an old inkwell. Who knows how many lunatics and criminals have knelt here, Paying the price for their evil. The Admiral's eyes, blurry from liquor, lapped hungrily at the wretched wood of the sinner's sorrow. His gray tongue licked at his dry lips. How does that rail feel on your young knees? It burns, doesn't it? Jonathan looked up, straight into the Admiral's eyes for the first time. No, he answered in a level voice. It doesn't burn, sir. It just hurts. The Admiral raised an eyebrow and sniffed. Yes, well, you would know, wouldn't you, Jonathan Grisby? Jonathan looked down quickly, stung by the man's words. The Admiral cleared his throat and took a step back. You're just the latest degenerate to feel her bite. And she is just one of the tools we use at Slabhenge to educate and civilize and correct. And you will be corrected. A crime as wicked as yours will require quite severe correction. The Admiral leaned close so that Jonathan could feel as well as hear his next words in his ear. You have done terrible things, haven't you, Jonathan Grisby? Jonathan lowered his head and didn't answer. The Admiral wheezed out a phlegmy sigh and took a step back. But all that begins tomorrow. You'll see. You've arrived late. It's nearly all dark time. Only one little thing remains to be done. He reached for something from his desk and slid it onto the sinner's sorrow's little writing surface. A pen and a blank piece of paper. At Slabhead.